Hi everyone, Stockmo here. Hope you're having a good day. For those that joined us on the live stream last night, thank you very much. If you haven't, I got a link down in the description to Keenan Grace and Stock Up with Larry Jones and myself. Had a live stream last night. Great time. Now, before we get into everything today, we know the Fed came out yesterday, said some things, made the market a little bit happy, and I do believe moving forward we're going to see a little bit less stress in terms of ramping up the rates and how quickly they're going to be aggressive and all this other stuff. We're going to talk about about that because right now I think the biggest thing that could push us into a recession is the Fed's actions or therefore too much action. So we're going to talk about that as well as some other issues out there. Now before we get into it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, take advantage of the link for Moomoo, Moo. give up to five free stocks as well as using my link only. You can get a free share of Xpeng for depositing $100 or more, take advantage of that. And of course the Gemini link where you can get $20 in free Bitcoin for trading $100 or more on on, uh, I should say on their platform using the link because you can get that and then you can turn it into Sandbox, which is one of my favorite metaverse plays over there. And they only have it there. They don't have it at Coinbase, Robinhood, or Weeble. So it's one of the reasons I absolutely do like that. And of course, come on over and check us out the Patreon. We have the portfolios in the private Discord, thousands of members, link down below. Now, as you can see here, Fed Chair Powell notes highly uncertain Ukraine impact, but said rate hikes are still coming. So of course they're going to have to tackle inflation. And this is something Thing that you're seeing the markets out there. And we're going to take a look at the markets. How is it pricing it in and all this other stuff? But right now, there is an aggressive push in pricing in a lot of rate hikes. I showed you Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Bank of America. They were pricing in a lot of rate hikes this year. We talked about seven straight. They thought some of these companies and analysts out there expected seven straight. Then it got up to nine straight. Some of them expect 10 straight through 2023. Now, I was on the fence and I said I was actually, you know, it's funny because as you recall, last, uh, we'll say spring in the, in the summer, I was one of the few people who thought that inflation was going to run out of control and that it was not going to be transitory and we were preparing for it. Now, I'm actually one of the few people that believe that the Fed doesn't have to be super aggressive in this, that, you know, we're going to see the supply chains as well as some of the actions from the Fed combating enough to handle inflation as we get through this. And with the global uncertainties right now, I don't think they should be super aggressive. Usually, when you see what's happening all over the world right now, especially over there, Russia, Ukraine, energy prices, all these things, you would normally see the Fed actually take the foot off the gas in terms of rate hikes and being tightening up the monetary policies. Instead, they have to kind of still do that when they normally would be lowering rates and you know doing things like that, but they can't because inflation is already so high. Normally, they would have a lot of weapons at their disposal, the Fed, to handle what they need to do right now, but they don't. They used a lot of that on Omicron, on Delta, on the original COVID. There are so many things out there uh, that are just causing the Fed a major headache. Now, they're going to get through this, but I think, you know, corporate America, the world, they're going to come together to help these supply chains and everything else that's going on with it. But with energy spiking, energy going through the roof because of what's going on with sanctions and all the things happening, it is just a wild, wild west kind of mentality for inflation. We know that it's not going to be under control in the next month or two. It's going to take a year to get this down to decent levels. But I do believe, and here's where I said it, I do believe it's going to happen. I know a lot of people out there believe the Fed has to get super aggressive. I actually think four to five rate hikes should be good for this year. Do another four to five next year. Get us up to that two to two and a half zone for the Fed rate. And we'll see where we go from there. I think uh, it's going to be a little bit of pain here for all of us. But eventually this will come down. So what happened yesterday with the rate hikes and the discussions? Well, you can see old Jay Powell came out and said, look, we're, we're not going to be that aggressive. So you can see it right here. Wall Street surge on Wednesday after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell signaled that the central bank would likely raise interest rates less than some investors have feared. I've been saying this on this channel for quite a bit that you can't just go with the herd mentality just because you're hearing a lot of people say one thing doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Look at history. Make sure you study that. Look at the macroeconomics behind everything and you realize that the Fed 
And even though they could jump it up, it would not absolutely take care of inflation because supply chains are so messed up, energy is going through the roof, and raising these rates aren't going to necessarily solve the energy crisis, okay? And so there's a lot more behind that, and I think you're starting to see that with the Fed saying, look, we could have been aggressive before Russia invaded Ukraine, the energy crisis, but now we can't be that aggressive. And so he was able to come out and say, look, we're not going to be the, you know, as aggressive as you expect us to be at this point. And so that is why I think Powell said he's inclined to support a 25 basis point hike in March, quelling some concerns about the potential for a more aggressive rate hike. The market already had that priced in. We already know the market had a 90-something percent chance of a quarter point rate hike for March. So this wasn't a big surprise, but him saying that basically gets rid of any doubt and you get a little bit of a pop yesterday in the markets, which was good. And then we move in. Are the markets fairly priced? I wanted to talk about a little something something here when it comes to the fundamentals of the overall market, because I hear a lot of different ratios thrown around, talking about the S&P being overpriced, how much more it could drop. And I wanted to share this with you. So just so you know, the average PE ratio of the S&P 500 has ranged between 13 and 15. I think it's around 15 for like the life of it. So I always tell people 15 is kind of the base number for this. So then we move uh, into where the S&P 500 is. And you can see the S&P 500 could still move lower due to valuation compression. It doesn't mean it won't, but I want to show you because it's not that massively overpriced anymore like everybody keeps screaming about. And John Butters, FactSet Senior Earnings Analyst, tracks the earnings of the S&P 500 companies and publishes a detailed weekly report based on Monday's close up to 43.73. So yesterday we were right around there, a little higher, just a little bit. Uh, the S&P 500 is trading at 19.4 times 2022's estimated earnings of 225.42 cents and 17.6 times 2023's earnings. 17. So, you know, after this year's up, we're talking uh, 10, 10 more months here, uh, nine months and some odd weeks, we are trading at 17.6 times 2023 earnings. That's not bad. That's not that, wow, we're trading at 30 PE anymore or 35 or 40. Now you're trading at a decent level, all right? And by breaking down the equation and they go into it and everything else, it says that the S&P 500 index could fall more than 8.2% uh, in addition to where it's at now to get back down to those fair levels, but that's the base. That's I've been saying this that you know if you look and people say how low do you think it could drop at this point? I said sure it could drop in my mind anything five to ten percent range. I thought anything under ten percent is a major long term buy, and I'm buying through this anyways. And but I'm always watching five to ten percent is pretty much my downside on this market so all the money i got invested if you're just into an s p 500 index fund i would say you're limited to about ten percent downside but the the upside obviously is unlimited if you're a long-term holder and so that is one thing i definitely wanted to share with everyone so as you continue to manage your portfolios figure out where you want to go what direction buy and sell and all that i still like financials i still like the banking sector the regional banks, obviously, I got that triple leverage on. And there's a few others out there, healthcare, energy, utilities. That's where I think 2022 and 2023 might lead us to have a, a good, solid, diversified portfolio, but heavy in those sectors. I think that's the route to go, my personal opinion. I think that's the way to reduce some risk. Make sure you're well diversified, having that 20 to 40 different stocks. And if you don't want to manage all that, consider going out and just looking at that S&P 5 500 index fund and I always like VOO and worst case scenario go talk to a financial advisor sit down with them have them manage everything and you're gonna pay a fee for that of course and they have their management fees in the funds they do I don't believe it's gonna be 0.03% like VOO and that's something I always warn people in the long run that can cost you a lot of money so definitely look into that so that's the big update today lots of things going on like I said if you haven't watched that video we did yesterday with me and and Keenan Grace and Larry Jones. Definitely look at that. I'll have a link down below. And of course, take advantage of the Moomoo link. Get a free share of Xpung right now for depositing $100 or more in there. And the Gemini link where you can get yourself $20 in free Bitcoin for trading $100 or more. And the Patreon link. Check that out. We got the portfolios, what I'm buying and selling, starting a new D.
dividend portfolio this month. We're gonna be starting that very soon and some other great things in the private Discord with thousands of members for Patreon members only. So that's what I got for you today. And like I always say, let's get out there and make some money.